Okay, let's just take a, just a wild swing at this and see if, if by taking wild swings and guesses we can figure out a more uh, exact approach. All right. Uh, so this is part B, I think. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to find out a function. A function that looks like, as we've reminded ourselves many times over and over, y equals. Okay. Y equals, and on the other side, you'll see some expression with x in it. Okay, that expression with x in it should always predictably take any of these x's and turn them into the y that goes with that x. Okay, should produce that solution. All right. Uh, so let's look at the pattern first. What pattern do you notice, kids? Um, that um, every time the x goes up by two. The y goes up by five. Okay. Okay, that's how do you use that kind of information? How do you how do you turn that into a function? Um well that's your slope. Oh. The, the, the x is the working. So it would be like um five five over two for your slope, maybe? Maybe. We're just saying 5 over 2. Okay, times x. Will that do it? Um, and then so let's answer that question. Will this function produce this table? Josie? Not quite. How do you know it won't? Because if you put 4 in there, for example, you'll get 10. If you put 6, you'll get 15. It's 5 less each time. So you'd uh, have to add 5 to make it work. Well, that explanation is a pretty direct uh, explanation. It just uses exactly the like, just basic definitions that we have. If this function produces this table, well, then let's try it. Let's try and put the numbers from this table into this function and see if it works. But it doesn't because it gives you 10, not 15. <coughs> and 6 gives you what, 15 and not 20. Mm -hmm. right? It's so close. It's just not quite there. So if 4 gives us 10 and 6 gives us 15 and not 28 gives us 20 and not 25, what are we missing? Plus 5. We need a plus yeah. 5. Plus 5. Okay, that works nicely. Uh, okay, so you notice Cadence said that he came up with the five halves. How? How do you come up with the five halves, Cadence? Um, by seeing how much the x goes up and then the y goes up, uh, and putting <coughs> the x on the bottom and the y on the top. Okay, so that is our, what was the word? Slow. 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 Okay, now these are linear functions, means they graph, when you graph them, they make a shape that it is a line, right? So if that's true, then they must, right? Going all the way back to, I want to say chapter two or three, where we're writing linear functions, it's possible to write them as y equals mx plus b. Right? So we can find that m, the slope, and b, the y-intercept, and we should be able to write these, these functions, okay? Um, let's follow the journey of a, of a different person. Maybe they just kind of notice this, that every time it goes up by five, so they just try five x, right? Uh, but maybe they try uh, well, five x minus five. They try that. Why, why might they try five times x? Each y is multiple of five, so. Yeah, it's multiple of five. So maybe if I take x and I multiply by five, I'll get multiples of five, yeah. right? Except the problem is, like this would work nicely if x went up by how much? Four. By one. If x went up by one and y went up by five, then yeah, there'd be some kind of a connection between like x and the multiple of five that goes with that x. But it's not, a, it doesn't quite work that way because this goes up by two. Like every time I plug in two more, I want to get y to go up by five. Right? So that's where we get half of that. Right? 
instead of going up by one, x is going up by two. And so every time I go up by two, I actually want it to be counted by only going up by one. So I divide that by two, right? And I get a multiple of five. Uh, so with Cadence's help, uh, we can just be reminded that we can look for the slope. If we can just find a steady increase between the, the y value, the pattern in the y increase, and a pattern in the, in the x increase, okay, or decrease, if those guys are decreasing, that'll be our slope times x plus the y-intercept. Right? How can we, I mean, so you could, you could use that, well, essentially you did, right? You, you, you try four here, but you know that doesn't work, right? Y equals five halves X, or five halves, I should put times four. Okay. And what does this come out to be? Okay. Comes out to be 10. Y equals 10. But Y is not supposed to be equal to 10, it's supposed to be equal to what? 15. 15, this is supposed to be, when I put in four, I should come out with 15, 15. So I know that there's this missing piece, that's my B. And so what's that missing piece? If 10 plus B is 15, what's the missing piece? Five. Five. So 15 equals 10 plus five. Yeah, so plus five. So B is five, so we can rewrite this equation. And Y equals five as X plus five. Uh, let's do one more together. Part C. Now kids. Um, um, I uh, remembered um, that wherever it starts on the, when you have zero for x. Okay. And, like, you plug in zero for x, and then it's like, that's where you start. Mm -hmm. Like, where you start on the y. What's that word that Cadence is looking for? Y yeah, the yeah, y-intercept. Very good. That's, um, so I just went to the zero. X is zero. X, when x is zero, you get eight. So just the y-intercept would be eight. So that tells me that I should have the plus eight there on the end. Who else came up with plus eight? Anybody come up with plus eight other than they recognize it as the y-intercept? Josie? Well, I liked that, and I, and I saw the negative 4 equals 4, so I thought about it, and, well, I just started adding numbers to it to see how close I could get to 4, and I came up with 8. Oh, okay. So you just added numbers, and so you got to 8, or to 4, so you have to add 8 to x. So you put x here? Mm -hmm. So why just x? Why not, like, 2x or 3x? Not sure why? Monica? Okay, so looking for that slope again, right? All we just we take the change in this is going to sound familiar, isn't it? The change in y, right? Over the change in x. What's that called? Delta, delta y over delta. Delta y over delta x. That's what the, those letters are called. Change in y over change in x is. And there's a single word, the slope, right? Delta y over delta x is the slope. So we just find the change in y and the change in x. Okay. Uh, the only thing is I have to be sure this is a, a linear pattern. Let's see, let's, let's read the directions. Well, it says in the directions finding linear patterns, doesn't it? And it says write a linear equation. Just a quick little challenge to you. What if you didn't know this was a linear pattern? How could you tell it was a linear pattern? Okay, so that when y changes and x changes, like the change in y and the change in x is always the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. The change in y and the change in x is always the same. That definitely <coughs> would guarantee that it is a linear pattern. Let's try this though. Real quick. <coughs> uh, so this is 
x and do y. Let's call this negative 2. We'll take this one to 0, and then to 4, and to 6, and 10. And we'll just start off with 0, uh, 3, and 9, 12, Linear? No. Why not? Because it jumps around. Jumps. Okay, so let's look at the change from here to there. Right? This is the this is the change in y. How much does y change? Three. How much does y, how much does x change? Up two. Okay, what about two? Change in y is three, change in x is two. Okay, well let's see. How much does a, a y change here? What's that? We'll both up by six. 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 Yeah. Okay. I mean, it is it is times three, but that we're not with linear patterns. We want to see if it adds on or takes away, not if it multiplies. That would be like an exponential function. How much does x change? Four. Okay, so it goes up. You know, x goes up by two, y goes up by three. Now x goes up by four, and y goes up by six. So that's not linear. double the change in x, then we just double the change in y, right? If, if I went in between these two, I would go from 0 to what? 2. Right? And then from 2 to 4. Yeah. Okay, that gets me there. If I went in between here, i go 3 to 6, six and then from 6 to nine. 9. I just didn't write that, right? That shouldn't count against me that I didn't write it, isn't it still linear? Okay, let's see about this one here. Let's say we make this... Uh, 12 and this 24. Okay, let's look at this this change. This change is 2, right? This change is 3, so that's exactly the same as it started. All right, what's the x change now? 6. 6 and the y? 12. Is that still the same linear pattern? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just like triple now, right? We triple the change in x, we triple the change in y. As long as that ratio is the same, right? As long as the ratio is the same. The ratio of 12 to 6 of uh, 4 to, or see, let's see, 12 to 6, 6 to 4, turn upside down, 6 to 4, right, is all equal to that change of 3 to 2. All linear. The stepping up is the same whether I triple it or double it or even cut it in half if, it, if that's possible, right? All of that, it's all the same. The ratio is the same, okay? And that reminds us that, these, that the slope is the ratio of the change of y to the change of x. <coughs> so let's try our hand at some more pattern recognition and function writing. It's going to take us to 5.3.